Hi everyone, today I'm going to read you um, a couple of chapters from The Ice Garden and it's by Guy Jones. Here is the blurb so that if you really enjoy the story, perhaps you can carry on reading it at home with your family. So Jess is allergic to the sun. She lives indoors in a world of shadows, peeking at other children from her curtained house. One night she sneaks out and there, just beyond the empty playground she's longed to visit, she discovers an impossibility, a magical garden made of ice. Chapter one. They called it the hat. It was a long white hood that masked the whole of Jess's face and neck, over which she wore something like ski goggles. The rest of her body was covered up with a baggy top, trousers and thick gloves so that no part of her skin was exposed to the sun. I don't like it here, she said, lifting the goggles to get at a maddening itch on her nose. No one likes hospitals, replied her mother. So can we go? You're in one of those moods then. Jess sighed, releasing a mouthful of sickly air. The numbers on the lift display began ticking upwards towards the children's ward. Already bee wet were forming on the back of her neck, sticking fabric to her skin. Summer was the absolute worst time of year. It's only a couple of times a month, said her mother. Only? said Jess, her voice rising. Must we do this? Jess thought they probably must, at least until her mother understood how much she hated this building and everything in it. The doors opened on the second floor to reveal a woman in a purple dress. She took a step towards them, but stopped short at the sight of the hat. Her mouth gaped like a fish, but no words came out. Can we help? asked Jess's mother. Oh, she said, recovering herself a little. Up or down? Going up. Right, well, down for me, thanks. The woman took a step back, still staring. You can close your mouth now, Jess said as the lift doors closed. Darling, that was rude, her mother scolded. She didn't hear me. Shame. They both smiled without looking at one another. Her mother jabbed the fourth floor button a few times and tapped her foot. The lift clunked and juddered as it started up again. I don't like him, said Jess. He's perfectly nice. He's nice to you. He talks to me like I'm an idiot. He talks to you like you're a child. Exactly. He's a very good doctor. How do you know? You don't have medical training. Game, set and match, Jess thought. Put your goggles back on, said her mother. There are windows in the corridor. But mum, she started. Jessica, her mother replied firmly. Game, set and match. Chapter two. Dr Stannard was extremely tall, extremely thin and Jess thought extremely annoying. He had a habit of leaning forward at the waist, like a flagpole bending in the wind. He was so large that surely his father had been a giant. Not just an ordinary person who happened to be on the big side, but a genuine giant, like the ones you read about in books. Jess had written a story like that herself once, about a particularly nasty character who lived in a cave stacked high with bones and unfortunate passers-by. Dr. Stannard didn't look like he'd ever lived in a cave. Perhaps his giant parents had decided to modernise. If so, then every day would have been a struggle not to eat the postman, she thought. Her own father, as far as she could remember, was relatively normal-sized. In the absence of clear answers from her mother, Jess had formed her own conclusions as to where he had gone. If asked, she'd explain that he was the unfortunate victim of alien abduction and that a shadowy, shadowy government agency, for government agencies are always shadowy, had tried to keep this fact locked tightly away. Jess, it was Dr Stannard, yes. 
Doctor asked you to take your gloves off, said Mother. Right, she said. She was miles away, Mummy, said the Doctor. He always called her Mother Mummy. It was idiotic. You were miles away, weren't you, Jess? I suppose so, she said. What were you thinking about, he said. Puppies, she replied. Her mother shot her a look that said, I don't know what you were thinking about, darling, but I bet our house that it wasn't puppies. But Dr Stannard seemed happy enough. He took her hand and turned it this way and that, rolling up the sleeves to look at her arm. When he was done, he moved to the other side. And what's this? he said. What's what? replied Jess with an innocent smile. What is it? asked her mother concerned. Well, that's not good to see. No, very nasty. Her mother leant over the doctor and Jess looked down at the tops of the two adults' heads as they peered at a patch of burnt skin on her wrist. I barely even felt it, she protested. It happened a few days before. Her mother had been in the kitchen at the back of the house when shouting had started in the street outside. Mr Olmus from number 33 was on the pavement screaming at the postman, who, he said, had yet again failed to deliver his new ice cream making machine. The postman tried to make the point that he could not in fact deliver an item that hadn't yet in arrived at the sorting office. But Mr Olmus hadn't wanted to listen. The postman was certainly an incompetent fool and very possibly the kind of scoundrel who'd steal another man's ice cream maker. Jess had pulled on the hat and opened the door to listen. The downstairs windows were tinted, but whenever she went outside, she had to make sure that she went full hat, as her mother put it. She liked Mr Olmus. He was a restless man who caught new hobbies like other people catch colds. This month, it was making his own ice cream. The one before it had been learning the harmonica, and a few weeks before that, he'd attempted to build a small working rocket in his front garden. Jess suspected that he'd even been a little bit relieved when that one hadn't worked. Watching the scene unfold, she'd reached down to scratch an itch on her arm, her bare arm. She'd jumped back into the hall, slamming the door. Looking down, she could see where her sleeve had snagged, revealing a smooth white patch of skin. After just a few short minutes in the sun, the spot had flared up into a nest of angry red blisters. What was that? her mother had said, coming into the hall. Mr Olmus is angry about ice cream, Jess had replied. Her mother shook her head. That man. I like him. You can peel potatoes, she said, heading back to the kitchen. Jess had pulled her sleeve down and gone with through it sorry, and gone through without complaint. Jess, said her mother, worrying at a loose strand of hair. If I can't trust you to look after yourself, I can't watch you every moment. You don't need to. You went outside in the day. I was covered up. Not well enough. My sleeve got stuck. It's not like I did it on purpose. Don't take that tone. I'm not taking any tone. Her mother glanced up at Dr Stannard, who was looking at them with an expression that screamed, I understand, and made Jess want to hit him with his own stapler. What do you think, Doctor? sighed her mother. I think she needs to be careful, Mummy. Very careful indeed. You hear what Doctor says, Jess? She opened her mouth to respond, to shout at them both that it had been an accident, and she was careful. And she was always careful. Instead, she set her face and stood. Can I go? she asked. Go where? For a walk. You can talk about me more easily if I'm not here. Her mother's glare was knife-like. Please, Jess added. You'll have to go full hat. I know that. Jess snatched the hood from the plastic looking desk from a plastic de looking desk. Her mother slipped back into the chair with a sigh. Five minutes then, she said, no more. Jess gave a sharp military salute and let the door swing shut behind her. <laughs>